Let's talk about the Wharfdale Diamond 12.1 bookshelf speaker. Speaker spinning round and round. Do, 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 do. Speaker spinning round and round. Speaker. These speakers retail for about $450 a pair. And in terms of what you get for your money, I think they're probably a good value. In terms of overall performance, I feel like the performance is probably closer to something like the $300 to $400 range based on previous speakers that I've tested. But with that said, there's also speakers that cost this much money that are much, much worse. I do feel like you're paying a little bit more for the overall look, finish, and build quality of the speaker, however. So if you have high aspirations for the overall sound quality, you should be okay but the output is really where the limitation is for the speaker. When I was listening to the speaker, the only really issue that I had was that the attack and transients weren't quite there on certain tracks. So if you had a drum hit or maybe a guitar or a saxophone or something, sometimes there wasn't a lot of bite in those like there should have been. I would characterize this speaker's tonality more along the lines of quote, laid back. With my mind or maybe even soft, if you will. And that's because there's a crossover dip between about one to three kilohertz that is just tucked down just a little about, about maybe about three dB or so. And to kind of give you an idea of what that sounds like, I'm actually gonna implement the same kind of equalization as I'm talking and I'm gonna to toggle. So right now I've got that enabled and you can hear me talking with about three dB taken out of that one to three kilohertz area. And then when I disable it, now I'm back to normal. And what you should notice is just a little bit lack of clarity and definition when I had the equalization applied. If you notice that, then it may be something that stands out to you. I will say this, there's a notion that this is done intentionally for the BBC dip. And if that's intentional, okay. I still prefer something that won't feature that BBC dip. I want something that's more smooth right through that area. So when you have attack, you hear it and you also kind of maybe not feel it literally, but a sense of acoustic feelings, if you will. When you don't have that attack, it kind of takes a little bit out of the overall liveliness of the sound. So that's where I would put this speaker in terms of the performance tonally. In terms of soundstage balance, I feel like it's got a good balance. It's pretty wide, about plus or minus six degrees up to about five kilohertz, and then it starts to narrow up, typical of a dome tweeter. Let's talk about the data. What I have here is the CEA 2034 data, and it's captured using my Clipple near field scanner. And this allows me to characterize the performance of the speaker before it even goes into a room. And that's really good information to have because there's a lot of times where you'll hear things and you'll think, is that the recording? Is that the room? Is that something else going on? Is it the speaker? I'm not sure. But if you can measure the speaker and take any influence out of the recording in the room, then you know for sure, yes, it's the speaker or no way it's not the speaker. If it isn't the speaker itself, then you know that it's something else and you can start trying to understand what it is. Maybe it's your room or maybe for your likes, you're gonna have to use something different. Maybe a more narrow speaker or a wider speaker in radiation. You can learn all that information simply from looking at the data. So what we have here is the on-axis response combined with some off-axis response information. The on-axis response is in black, and I've drawn a orange trend line going through to give you the rough estimated average sensitivity, which is about 84 dB. The response follows that trend line. Now this right here, I didn't really have an issue with in terms of hearing the F3 and the F10 for the speaker, 61 Hertz and 46 Hertz down here. This speaker isn't gonna play low. You are definitely gonna need a subwoofer and that kind of goes with common sense. It's only a five inch midwoofer. I think you understand that you're gonna want a subwoofer and or you're not gonna be able to play loud without one. The early reflections directivity index down here is a sign of just how smooth the handoff is between the midwoofer to the tweeter. Most of the time when you have a difference in that direction. So for right now, the early reflections directivity index is increasing because the woofer is starting to beam. Now all of a sudden, you're starting to level back out. You flatten out right through between three and five kilohertz, and then you increase because now the tweeter is beaming. This area right through here is problematic for a couple things. One is gonna be the vertical dispersion of the midwoofer relative to the tweeter. 
And then the other thing is going to be some diffraction elements. So there's actually two diffraction elements. One of those is around three kilohertz and the other one is around five kilohertz. So that explains these differences between the listening window and the on axis response in these two particular areas. As you can see at the bottom, I've drawn a trend line. Now this trend line indicates the Wolfer beaming. And then this is where you kind of flatten back out right through here as you hand off from the Wolfer to the tweeter. You've got some diffraction going on and then the tweeter starts to beam as I said previously. This is the estimated in-room response, which is a good way of understanding what the speaker is likely to sound like in your room in terms of timbre. And if I draw a trend line through this, which helps us have a better understanding of any deviation from a normal type of sound that this speaker might have in a room, we can see that this one kilohertz to three kilohertz area has a dip in it. Again, this is crossover implementation, whether it's done on purpose to reflect the BBC sound or not, it does still result in this dip. And that's what takes away from the attack or the dynamics and gives it that laid back sound. The horizontal radiation is about plus or minus 60 degrees wide with narrowing above five kilohertz where the tweeter is starting to beam. And there's also a hole in the horizontal response between one to three kilohertz. The vertical window is super, super tight. You're at about plus or minus five degrees. So you don't want to sit five degrees above the tweeter or five degrees below the tweeter. Otherwise, you're going to have a hole in the response and it's going to sound quite different the further you go from that tweeter line. This is the harmonic distortion at 86 dB. And in terms of what I'm seeing here, everything looks pretty good. You're below 1% THD uh, until you get to about 60 Hertz. And actually that's kind of surprising for a five inch midwoofer. Now let's see what happens when you go to 96 dB, which is what we have here. And we can see that there's been a big change in the distortion profile of this speaker. Even just 10 dB more has raised the distortion well above 1%, even above 3% at about 150 Hertz. So this speaker is really starting to give up when you get it anywhere between 86 to 96 dB. Then if we look at the compression data, which I'm showing here, we can also see that there's significant, significant compression from 96 dB to 102 dB. And really what this data is saying, one of two things, either you need to sit somewhat close to the speaker if you want to listen loud, or if you want to listen far away from the speaker, you're going to have to keep the output of the speaker in check because the mid bass and the lower bass regions are not going to have dynamicism. Basically what you're doing is you're taking the output of that speaker and you're handicapping it by depends on which frequency you're looking at, but let's pick, let's pick about 300 Hertz. 300 Hertz is one and a half DB down at 102 DB at one meter. 102 dB for one speaker at one meter is about 92 dB for a pair of speakers in a room at four meters. If you wanted to get that loud, this speaker is going to give up one and a half dB of dynamic range. So if you have a strong kick drum and you have the harmonics of that kind of playing through this speaker, then you're going to lose about one and a half dB of the transient range that the kick drum is going to have in terms of dynamics. The multi-tone distortion shows over 10% distortion at 96 dB, and that's 11.26 volts. Are you gonna hear that? Probably, yes. Usually I put negative 20 dB as a marker, just as a guide, because that's kind of the tipping point for when I start to notice the distortion becoming more and more audible. Now it's possible you'd hear it lower, and it's certainly possible you're gonna hear it higher, but I think this is kind of a good general rule of thumb to say, yeah, this is gonna hit the limits of the speaker. Now, if we apply the same signal, but we don't let it play below 80 Hertz, basically like applying a high pass filter to the speaker, 80 Hertz and above, then we can see that the multi-tone distortion throughout the mid range is much lower. So let me go back real fast. This was full band and this is with 80 Hertz and above. Yes, using a crossover is gonna help this speaker out a good bit. For $450, this is what I'm taking away from the speaker. You're paying at least an extra hundred bucks for the overall build quality and looks. The performance of the speaker is something that you could get for around maybe 300 to $350 and maybe even a little bit less, but you are not going to get the looks of this speaker, I think for much less than what you're paying for at 450. The linearity, the timbre, the overall sound quality of the speaker at moderate to reasonable listening levels 
is good. I actually liked it for most music, but I still was missing that attack and that dynamicism that should be there with that one to three kilohertz region. Personally speaking, I still prefer a speaker that is more neutral through that area. And by neutral, I mean, doesn't have a dip, doesn't even have a peak. It's just smooth right through that area because that is more true to the music that you're going to play. Whatever that music is, an objectively flat on-axis response with smooth trending off-axis response is going to sound, in terms of timbre, more accurate. And that's what I prefer. I heard the difference on the speaker. Things were a little bit soft, not quite as dynamic, and the attack wasn't quite there. I mean, it's not like it's taken away completely, but you're probably going to notice that. Now, you may like that, and that's fine. I'm just filling you in, no pun intended, on what I heard. The output capability of the speaker is on the relatively low side. It doesn't get low in frequency, which I think we would expect given that it uses a five inch midwoofer, but I do wish that it didn't have such high compression at the higher volumes. It would be nice to run this up a little bit louder without suffering that compression. All in all though, I actually do like this speaker. It's one that I wouldn't mind recommending to somebody if they're in the ballpark of this price and they want something that looks a little bit better than the typical stuff that you're going to get for the $300 to $400 region. So with that said, I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, all that cool stuff that helps me out with YouTube's algorithm. Uh, big shout out to my patrons, any of you who have bought anything through my affiliate links or if you've donated, that helps a lot because I actually bought these speakers myself and I will be selling them to patrons and if no patrons want them, then I'll put them up somewhere else for sale at a discounted price because now they're used. But that allows me to do what I'm doing and to test this kind of stuff without having to worry about, just say other things that go along with it. We'll just put it that way. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you later. Peace.